can expect that there will be no broad understanding of what the terms Nazi and fascist really mean now and for some time to come. These will simply remain vain derogatory designations used against those perceived to be the bad guys. Satanists are aware of what impact words and images have on the herd, and thus use them to their advantage. It should be clear to anyone who has observed human society that there is an all-pervading interest on the part of the contemporary general public in the Third Reich. Anyone with cable television or who happens to visit movie theaters will see that the Nazis are the standard archetype in entertainment for what the masses deem to be evil, and they are fascinated with this dead government and fetishize it to no end. Do you watch the History Channel, whose emblem is a carved, angular letter H? We jokingly say that this really stands for Hitler, not history, as much of their programming concerns analysis of the Third Reich. The herd's misconceptions establish how a Satanist uses symbols to influence these people. Would-be iconoclasts today who try to reclaim the swastika as a good symbol have failed to supplant the herd's identification of this as a sign of ultimate evil, far more potent to them than our sigil of Baphomet. When dealing with mass consciousness, current meanings establish buttons that can be pushed. Certain savvy Satanists who make their living entertaining the masses have used the public's obsession with this material for their own ends. Hence, they have employed symbols and techniques derived from Third Reich spectacles, which were undeniably powerful means for motivating masses of people for the purpose of stimulating their audiences and thus putting money in their pockets. Is this advocating political fascism? No, of course not. Fascism is a doctrine that requires the submission of individuals to the goals of the state. This is a collectivist philosophy, suppressing individualism, which states that each person should sacrifice himself to an abstract principle which is treated as a sacred entity. The state. The past supposed glories of the state, usually mythological, become the sacred icons in what is, in actuality, a new religion. Fascism is clearly a means for controlling herds, and one that was effective. It took one of the largest wars to end the bid for world dominance by nations using this system. The sameness of the masses serving the state is the common ideology for unification of the populace, and such is the favorite tool for totalitarians, whether they are called fascists or clergy or commissars. Hence, uniform modes of dress are frequent tools to bond the populace together. Satanism advocates a different approach. Stratification is a term coined by Anton LaVey to signify how nature allows everything to seek its own level. It is not something that need be advocated. It happens of its own accord. Social orders are human constructs, artificial in nature. We Satanists think that if one were to apply nature's principles to a society, in this context, stratification would then be the concept that one's merit evidenced by developed talent and productivity, decides one's position in society. That position could change depending upon the shifting matrix of societal values for your abilities. Individuality is thus championed, and there will be a flux in the class status rather than an imposed stasis creating a frozen hierarchy of hereditary aristocrats. This was not the goal of the German fascists of the Third Reich. Their standards were racist. They sought political power and needed a scapegoat for the economic woes of many people. They chose the Jews since many were economically successful as well as skilled arts practitioners 
and Nazi propaganda galvanized much of the populace into following them through hatred of people they branded seditious monsters. They branded seditious monsters. They also targeted, they also targeted communists, whom they felt were enemies to their system of national socialism. Once the Nazis took power, the first order of business was to imprison political enemies, many of whom were communists. These were the people first incarcerated in concentration camps. However, the need to continue identifying enemies, denigrating groups of people so that the Aryans could feel superior, led to the imprisonment and extermination of the Jews, along with gypsies and even homosexuals, despite the homophile proclivities of some leading Nazis. They too were purged, decadent, decadent. Decadent was the smear used against them, while the Nazis assumed the mantle of moral, aesthetic purity. When fascist doctrine is placed into practice, regardless of where or when, there has to be somebody who tells the herd what the needs of the state are to be, since the state is just an abstraction. It does not actually exist. Here enters the ruling class otherwise known as the Nazi Party, the Communist Party, the Khmer Rouge, and so on. These rulers claim to embody the state, telling the masses what the will of the state is. They reign much like the ancient priesthoods who held their power by being the only ones capable of communicating to people the will of the gods. These people are a de facto aristocracy using the state for its raison d'etre, just as the latter-day heads of some of the communist states handed down the will of the people as their excuse for controlling their mass subjects. These rulers are not subject to sacrificing themselves to the state, because they are the ones who, as embodiments of the state, choose who is to be sacrificed. They don't pick themselves, though sometimes they do pick their cohorts, who are getting a bit too cocky. These kinds of rulers now use terms more palatable to our century, whose masses won't buy such old excuses as the divine rights of kings. But their means are identical. Of course, these rulers are often foiled by subsequent prophets who convince the masses that they, rather than the current rulers, embody the state. And so, counter-revolutions occur and the former leaders are usually dispatched with violence. Don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain, said the glowering face in a fountain of fire, hoping that Dorothy and crew wouldn't notice who really is pulling the strings. But Toto, the beast, pulled aside the curtain. Now we might begin to see how Satan's factor into this equation. The Satanist should always be aware of who is really running the situation in which he finds himself. The clever know the ropes of the system in which they live and use that to their advantage. Satanists do not see themselves as being part of the herd and naturally resist any attempts to be forced to live under any regimes that would make them part of the controlled masses. However, however Satanists might not care how the herd is being controlled, so long as they themselves aren't subject to being controlled along with them. If forced by circumstance to be part of such a governmental situation, and I caution the reader to examine how much he really knows about the machinations of this current nation of residents, the clever Satanist would either attempt to be the person who pulls the strings, or, more likely, his associate. Being the one behind the leader is generally a safer position, as the leader is always the target while the advisors often survive changes in top dogs. Let Machiavelli, let Machiavelli be your guide.